Good morning, one and all. My name is Steve Bissett. I teach over at the Center for Cartoon Studies, and uh, this is going to be a another inking demo this morning. Uh, and I'm going to walk through a few different things today, and I figured I'd start with um, sort of a primer on drawing a couple kinds of dinosaurs, and I'm going to scale this one back a little bit so um, it may also work for younger viewers, kids. Uh, as opposed to the sophisticates who are here in the room right now. So, um, so I'm going to do a quick little warm-up sketch. I usually start my day with at least one or two warm-up drawings just to kind of loosen up. And I figured out what I do is, uh, with the exception of one piece uh, that I've done some rough penciling on, I would carry every drawing today from pencil to ink so that you can see the whole process. Um, this means I'm going to be sticking with what I know today. Uh, next time we do a demo, I'm going to come in with some pre-penciled pieces involving deer and hunters and moose, which I can't draw right off the top of my head. Uh, so I'm going to do my first warm-up drawing. I'm working with a Japanese Pentel brush pen, and these are uh, a great tool to work with. Um, and it is literally a brush pen. It's got its own well of ink inside, like a fountain pen. and um, I can just go in and start playing around with lines. Usually with the first drawings I do in the day, I just kind of feel out things. The thick and thin of the line, which I'll be paying attention to in the next couple of drawings, is something I'm not that concerned about when I do my first piece of the day. And what I'm drawing here is a young T-Rex. And uh, we don't know what kind of eyes they had uh, because the soft parts, of course, aren't preserved in the fossil record. But I always go with this kind of reptilian pseudo cat eye. Now. Uh, these were not furry dinosaurs, as far as we know, so all the lines I'm laying in are things that I can convert into scale textures when I start going in with a uh, pen as opposed to brush. And uh, a couple of um, points I'll make. One is people have the illusion that you can get a finer line with a pen rather than a brush, and that is not so. As long as you've got a good brush, with a fine point, uh, you can get a finer, pen, uh, finer line with a brush than you can with a pen tip. And you also can control that line so that you're going from thick to thin, as I'm doing here. This is the little T-Rex ear pocket. Uh, they didn't have external ears. They had more like internal ears, more like uh, lizards or frogs, as best we know. Okay, now I'm going to go in with um, a dip pen, and I'm going to work with a brand new G nib donated by Jen Vaughn this morning. That means it hasn't been broken in yet, so I could really mess it up. And I did not, I didn't follow my own rule of breaking in a pen nib, which is to lick it. Uh, that is so that you get a little bit of um, saliva on it so the ink has something to flow with, but because I didn't do that, I'm just going to go with it, which may interrupt the ink flow at times. Uh, scales around the eyes, which I think I mentioned last demo, are usually the finest scales, and you'll see those kind of scales on birds. If any of you have pet birds, because uh, you're unlikely to get that close to a crow in real life. <laughs> um, really, really super fine scales around the eyes. And why am I bringing that up? Any kind of pattern I'm laying down like that becomes a gray pattern. And it becomes part of the way that I draw your eye in on which part of the drawing I would like to have be the focus of your attention. Um, and uh, my mentor, and uh, first real cartooning teacher, Joe Kubert, uh, once made the case for eye contact being essential to any effective uh, drawing, particularly in comics and cartooning, because 
either eye contact with the viewer or eye contact between characters in a drawing or comic story uh, really brings things to, to life. And through trial and error, I've discovered Joe's right. <laughs> All my errors were unforgivable. Okay, now one of the things with, this is going to be a drawing of my character Tyrant, and one of the things that defines uh, Tyrant as Tyrant is he has a distinctive scale pattern that goes from behind his eye um, and down into his neck. And I'm going to indicate this here as grays. Now, if I was working with either color, you know, watercolor or wash, I would be rendering this with uh, wash or, or watercolor. But since this is a line drawing, I'm just going to lay it in with um, a G nib. It's unfortunate that we don't have a theme song for this show that we could play incessantly while this is happening. And notice with the G-nib, uh, one of the things very important, I mean, I don't know how well you can see, these are huge beads of ink here. Um, I did not bring a paper towel, which normally I would use, so I'm going to use one of the pieces of paper I have as sort of a blotter. Um, or I could go in and actually use that as a dip well. Thank you. Um, around the eye? Uh, because I'm able to get a crisper line. That's a great question. And with scale patterns, I sometimes want a very crisp line to indicate the hard edges of uh, a scale shape. Um, I would tend to use brush almost exclusively, which you'll see in one of the drawings I'll be doing uh, within uh, about a half hour of now. Uh, if I'm working with an animal uh, or uh, textures that involve fur, you know, um, or fabric, and I'll tend to use brush just because a brush line is more um, compatible with that kind of a texture. Whereas with a, with a pen line, it's not the fineness of the line as much as the quality of the line itself. And I'm working with a G-nib at this point because I really want these scales to have a, a, a crisp, sharp edge to them. And it's just a more reptilian texture, if you will. Um, And it also means that I can, I can play with some of these becoming cross-hatching, as you can see under the neck here. I want to imply like these are coarser scales, like you'd find on the belly of a, an alligator or, or a crocodilian. Um, we don't know what kind of scale patterns they had. Uh, there, there have been some fossils that have turned up of um, uh, mum mummified dinosaurs. Uh, and the closest they've gotten to T-Rex mummies indicate really super fine, almost bead-like scales. Um, but I have not been able to do a proper investigation of, uh, nor have I found nice sharp photos of those mummies, so I'm still sort of winging my, uh, my T-Rexes. Okay, I want to belabor this. This is just a warm-up drawing. And as I've mentioned before, no dinosaur drawing is complete without a couple flies. Um, as any farmer knows or a kid who's spent any time around or near a barn, animals sure attract flies. 